A new filing from special counsel Jack Smith offers a window into the level of detail he plans to present in the 2020 election interference case against former President Trump. Court paperwork shows the prosecutor plans to use White House cell phone data from, an, from on and around January 6, 2021 at trial. CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa puts this in context. In a filing late Monday, special counsel Jack Smith said he plans to call an expert witness to testify about data extracted from cell phones used in the White House by the former president and another unnamed individual. How big of a deal is this? It could be monstrous. Former January 6th committee senior technical advisor Denver Riggleman. You can actually see messages, they can see texts, they can see files, they can see emails. They can see all the data that's on that specific device, and that can really open up other individuals downstream that they can investigate. According to sources close to Trump, he often used a personal phone while in the White House and at times used phones belonging to his close aides. The phone data would likely not contain a record of what was said in possible phone calls, but would show who Trump called and when, and also who he didn't call at key moments on January 6th. Former Joint Chiefs Chair Mark Milley said this to the House Select Committee. You know, Commander in Chief, you got an assault going on on the capital of the United States of America. And it's nothing. No call, nothing, zero. All this comes as the special counsel pushes for the Supreme Court to weigh in on whether Trump is immune to prosecution and readies for next year's trial. Increasingly, we see uh, Jack Smith cutting off every available defense to the president. And Robert Costa joins me now. Bob, what gap in the prosecution's case can maybe this cell phone data fill in? John, good to be with you. More than a year ago, uh, CBS News and The Washington Post found these phone logs of the official record of Trump's phone calls in the White House in and around January 6th. And there was a more than seven hour gap in the records that were turned over to the National Archives. Obviously, there were more calls made during that day. There was no way Trump didn't make calls for seven hours during this intense period, but there was no record in the National Archives. So now what Jack Smith has is an ability to go in with new phone data he's acquired through the, through the course of his investigation and map out the rest of Trump's calls. And you've done that reporting, as you said, you also uh, in that work was uh, reported once one point about burner phones. Um, uh, remind me, Mr. Brown, just again, why a president would have a burner phone, why that'd be important. And d does this go to whether he knew at the time that uh, whatever he was doing was not kosher. The question here, John, is did Trump use his aides' personal phones? Now, some Trump has denied ever using a, quote, burner phone, says he doesn't even use the phrase. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton has told CBS News he has heard Trump in private use that phrase, burner phones. But for Jack Smith, it's about... Can you figure out, was Trump not only using a personal cell phone that was not part of the government stash, was he not using a landline, was he using his aides' phones or other phones that were just around the West Wing at the time? Figuring that all out will really help Smith make his case. And the case, just quickly, Bob, is, is basically what the president knew and was thinking at this really crucial time. No, it's more than that. It's about whether he had criminal intent to commit a conspiracy against the United States to stay in power. And that's Robert, what phones can help really do. Robert Costa in Washington. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.